I'm trying to get all these little tacks out and not a single one has come out easy. Nuts. So I think what we're going to do today is go ahead and coat this thing for the final time. And uh, that way we don't have to worry about this rust keep um, coming back, continually coming back. So what I'm going to do, I vacuumed it. I'm going to give it a quick wipe down and then I'm going to hit it with some converter, rust converter. And then we'll pour 15 it and get a coating on this metal. Once we have the pour 15, I'm going to come through and do some seam sealer on all of these seams. Then we're gonna hit it with the primer and then we're gonna decide if we need some more seam sealer from that point, maybe a little body fill, I'm not sure, we'll see. So let's get started. Okay, this has had plenty of time to dry. Crazy thing is though, there, it, it leaves a little bit of a sticky residue on here. You can kind of feel it's a little bit sticky. So what I do is I come through with this uh, brush here just on the regular drill and run over it really good and it burns that, that residue off. And then I'm gonna come through and wipe it down with some acetone. Okay, I've had my pour 15 here in front of the heat lamp for a while trying to get it up to temp. Hopefully this stuff's still in good shape. I haven't used it for a few months. Dad? Um, can you please change the batteries to the drink? Okay, and there you have it. One coat of pour 15. I went all the way up the firewall. I went part way up the back wall here. One coat. I got really good down in these seams. We're gonna let that dry, then we'll come back with some scotch bright. We'll scuff it, and then we're gonna go ahead and start on our seam sealer. From there, we'll prime. The reason why I wanted to get this coat of pour 15 on here not only is because it's a rust encapsulator, but also because the seam sealer, there's two different types of seam sealer. There's DTM, which is direct to metal, and then there's seam sealer that has to be applied over top of a painted surface. The stuff that I'm using, the Transtar 4130, is, is not direct to metal. It has to have a coating underneath it between it and the raw metal. So that pour 15 will give us that coating. Okay, this stuff had the long weekend to dry. We're back out here, and uh, what I need to do is scuff this. There's a few spots here where you can still see a little bit of metal. I'd like to get a second coat on here. I've got my Scotch Brite medium grip sanding pad on here, and I'm just going to use my DA and run over and take the gloss off of this port 15. <laughs> Okay, I've got a little bit of adhesion promoter. I've scuffed up everything, but there's always 
you know, some of these little edges here, corners that are hard to get, we'll hit this and then we can let it soften that prior coat and then we'll come back with some more 415. Okay, so it's been a couple hours and we are finger dry, which means we our window to recoat is still open. We don't have to scuff the gloss off, but it's dry enough that you're not gonna mess up the coat, the undercoat there, when you brush on the new coat. So what I'm gonna do is I just wanna recoat basically the floor area here. I'm not worried about up on the firewall and I'm not worried about the back of the cab. I just want to get one more layer here and basically I'm worried about the area where my feet are. I'm not even really that worried about underneath the seat, I'm not worried about up on the firewall. I'm just sort of worried about this right in here. There, there was some real bad pitting and it's filled in very nicely and I just want to put one more coat on there because it's really helping to lay out some of that area instead of me having to use filler. My other thought here is I'm down to the very bottom of my 415. Basically what's left in the can here is either going to harden in the can before I have a chance to use it again or I go ahead and use it. Um, just using one of these cheap chip brushes for this coat since it's light. And you know, quick tip for you guys, if you just go like this and pull on these, you'll get a lot of the loose bristles out that would otherwise fall out in your coating. Again, I'm really happy with the way that this stuff's really helping to flow out some of that rust pitting. And this is a very high traffic area here. So it's gonna be nothing but beneficial for us to get the extra coat on. Okay, now one final thing I wanna do before I use up all my pour 15 is this drain tube right here that I welded into the cab for the vintage air. That's regular mild steel. I didn't have a piece of stainless. So what I want to do is I want to coat the inside of that really well with pour 15. Okay, and we've got it coming out now, as you can see. But I think what I'm going to do, just to be sure I've got a decent coat in there, is like I said, I'm going to run a piece of welding wire up. Once it goes out the other side, I'll hook a little piece of cloth to it and we'll spin it with the drill as we pull it through. Okay, it's after hours out here in the shop, but before my curing window closes on this pour 15, I want to come back through with a uh, automotive primer and hit all of my seams where I'm going to be applying seam sealer. The only reason why I'm doing this is because of the color. The uh, Transstar that I'm using, the Transstar seam sealer, which is the 4167, it's black and it's really hard to see what you're doing when you've got black on black like this. All right, good morning to you guys. This had a, had the evening to dry last night. And today we'll be getting on the seam sealer. I've got to scuff this a minute and get some of this overspray off. And then uh, we'll start working on these seams here. I put the seam sealer inside of here last night so it could get a little warmer than ambient temperature. It's a little chilly outside. You guys are probably getting sick of this view just staring at this cab, huh? Okay, I've got here this brushable seam sealer by 3M. It's 08656. And I've had this can here 
for the duration of my project, and that's as far as I've made it through. It's still good. As long as you keep these things sealed up, they last. Now I've used this on the bottom side of the cab, and I've used it in the doors extensively. It's it's a really pretty good product. I've been very happy with it. But I'm going to use this in the areas that are hard to reach. Some of this other stuff, I'll probably use the, uh, the Transstar in a caulking tube. Okay, I'm finished up with this stuff. This stuff can be painted in one hour. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I'm gonna see if this tube held. If not, it's a loss. Um, but I'm gonna move on and start hitting some of the sealer out of the caulking tube here. And I'm gonna tool it over and give it a nice profile. Got a little bit of acetone here. One thing to keep in mind, if you're doing seam sealer, that's gonna get nice paint over it and you want it to have a very nice profile. One trick is to run blue painter's tape around the edges, then do your seam sealer, give it a profile, and then peel your tape up. That's gonna give you the nicest, cleanest application. Again, that would be for if you were gonna top coat it I'm using Raptor Liner, and the Raptor Liner is very forgiving, and it will easily cover these edges. Okay, so I went ahead and coated with a thin layer of primer. This was just so I could analyze and see how I was looking. See if there was any problem areas that needed any further attention. I'm going to let this flash off and then I'll uh, go ahead and check it in a few hours. 
Okay, welcome back. Now I've got to come clean right off the bat. I've been standing on this cab for the last couple of days in my free time. I didn't take you guys along because you would have been bored senseless. But as you can see, almost everything has got an 80 grit scratch on it. I really came across some of this stuff here where the seam sealer was proud. I knocked it back down. It, it sanded down pretty well. I contoured a lot of these corners in here on this sill. I tried to make it look as seamless as possible. And then I went ahead and even scuffed up the dash. And then I'm going to bring it outside and I think I'm going to pressure wash it with hot water. Okay, she's all tucked in and that's gonna go ahead and spend the night with the fan and the heat lamp and the covers on. Okay, I've gotta do a little bit of body filler work here. That's where the old latch used to be and then I converted it to the bear claw. So I'm gonna do a little bit of body work there. And then I think we're gonna probably shoot some primer. We'll be one step closer to shooting primer anyway. So let's get on that. Okay, I just gotta try to set up some lighting so I can see inside of this cab a little bit better. And I think we're pretty well good to go. Got the floor covered tomorrow. I will probably roll this door up a little bit, put a drop cloth across the bottom, and then put a fan, a little box fan facing out in that back corner. So that's the plan. $5 worth of drop cloths and some scrap lumber and we're good to go okay it's the next morning and i left my lights in here to try to stave off some of the cold it is still fairly chilly in here but luckily the metal is slightly warmer than ambient temperature and i did keep the paint in here for a few hours also so I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and mix up some of this primer sealer. It's a product made for John Deere by Valspar. 
I'm gonna get some of this mixed up and I think we'll start shooting some coats. Okay, we got coat number one on. Went pretty well. A little bit of streakiness. And unfortunately, when I was fogging primer into these corners, of course, a little bit of debris blew out. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you blow out those corners with your air nozzle before you paint. Murphy's Law says you're going to get some stuff out into your paint. What can you do? And then the other problem I hit was uh, the bottom of my respirator was dripping a little bit of condensation. And I got a few little drips. Coat number one is done. I'm going to let it sit for a little while. And we'll come back with coat number two. All right, and there you have it. Three good coats of primer. It's already, it's already pretty tacked off. But I'm gonna go ahead and give that some time to dry, most likely overnight. We'll see. And then at that point, it's a matter of coming back over top with some seam sealer on some of these rough areas here. I just wanna smooth those out. I am coming over top of this with Raptor liner, and that Raptor liner is pretty forgiving. Um, I've got to mask the dash off because the dash will be flat black. That will not be Raptor lined. And maybe a little bit of spot putty on some of these areas that look like that. And then we can start kind of buttoning this cab back up. We'll install some of the electronics permanently, get that steering column back in permanently, get the seat back in permanently. So, moving right along. Like, share, subscribe. If there's anybody that you know that might be interested in this build, then uh, be sure to send the video their way. Leave a comment down below, especially if you guys have something to add. I always appreciate the feedback, and we'll see you on the next one.